Okay, so uh, this lesson is going to be on level design, which means that I'm going to have to go on here and load the master file. <coughs> Now that everything is loaded, I'm going to pick a Good Springs residence. And under Interiors, they abbreviated the word Good Springs with GS. So you'll see Doc Mitchell's house right down here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to use is the uh, House Interior 1. Now, what we're going to want to do is uh, create a very similar house to, the, to this interior. And if we click down in here on any of the objects, you'll notice that the, re the uh, render window takes us right to it. And I like this house a lot. I think it looks like crap, and uh, that's fine, because I'm going to probably tear it apart. But um, before I go crazy with you know tearing a house apart and such, how about we do this? We duplicate the interior, <coughs> which means we duplicate the cell. So, now a copy has appeared underneath, and notice that we are not in the copy up here, it's just interior 01. Now we're in the copy. And I don't really like the name of this, so I'm going to click it once, and it'll let us change the name. I'm going to put my initials, and then house interior. <clears throat> if I can spell it right. There we go. Now, when I double click it, we're inside the interior and my uh, interior has disappeared on the list. That is because it is now where it's exposed to be alphabetically because when I click on it, it made it uh, go where it's exposed to. Now I'm going to click on the plunger. Now I'm in the map. And this map is very dark and I really can't see much. So what I'm going to have to do is press down the A key. And what the A key will do is the same thing that this button does right here, which is light up the house entirely and it makes it much easier for working on these dark um, interior places and now from here if you look in here you will see uh, furniture static and uh, so on now you're probably wondering how is static which is non-movable solid objects different from um, furniture. And if you look here, I'm going to drag this couch. This is how you put objects into the window. Click and drag, and then here, the couch has appeared. Now, with my uh, left mouse click, I can move it in front of our face. The right mouse click will turn it, uh, you know, rotate it. <clears throat> and if I hold down the Z key while moving my mouse down, it will move it up and down. I can also move it straight on the x-axis or the y-axis by holding down the x key and the left mouse uh, button or uh, on the here on the y-axis with the same way by holding down the y key and moving it. Now we want this to drop down uh, into the map so if I just hit the F key it'll drop it on the uh, solid object underneath of it which we dropped it on a wall and we dropped it on another thing, and it's not... There we go. Uh, I lied. There we go. Okay, so now there's a couch in the middle of the room. But uh, what makes this couch different from furniture is if you look over here at this couch, which is dirtier, but still the same thing, um, you'll see these little blue people. And these little blue people, if you uh, went up and pressed, um, you know, whatever... If you press like E or A or whatever controller you're using, and um, or a keyboard, you would sit on the couch, and that's what this is showing: is that you can sit on the couch. This couch here has nothing in front of it, therefore it is not uh, furniture you can actually sit down on. So I'm going to hit the uh, delete key and delete it, and uh, 
Now, now that we know how to rotate objects and set them down, we can now edit the interior properly. So where do we go from here? Well, there's a few things we can do. Um, one of which would be editing containers. So we want to put objects into containers. So if I, if I uh, double click on this first aid kit here, I can edit the base of the object as well as uh, say who owns it, I can lock it, and other stuff that mostly deals with um, scripting or some other type of whatever. Okay, so yeah, we're under container and uh, these question marks on these boxes are... Uh, I double clicked it so you could see it. They are items, but they are items that are calculated on chance. See uh, over here? So it's random if you get something inside of this uh, generic first aid kit. So instead of it being so generic, I want to put a specific object in it. I'm going to give it my initials again so I can easily find it on the object tree. And I'm going to name it... Um, I'm going to name it Awesome box. And I'm going to click it so that it respawns every few days, and I'm going to find an object to put in there. So over here, I'm going to click items. I'm going to go into armor. I'm going to get rid of this filter so I can see everything in this uh, field. And I'm going to put in some uh, some kind of random armor. I put in some NCR trooper gear, as well as uh, a weapon of choice here. Put our rolling pin. I'm gonna hit OK, and it's gonna ask me if I want to create a new form. I'm gonna have to hit yes because. Um, if I don't hit yes, then I've pretty much changed every single object with that old ID that was on there. So every first aid kit with that ID, and there are different, uh, there are duplicates that hold the same one because they're generic. Um, every one of them would have been changed, and we don't want to screw up our games like that. So now that I've done that, I'm going to show you uh, two very useful things you can do. If I hold down the control key and I click another object, I now have two selected objects. I can also hit control Z to put them back. Um, and another thing was, uh, another thing is that you can duplicate objects by holding, like, uh, holding the object uh, as selected, hitting control D, and then look, two objects are now created. Okay, since we don't need this other object, it's getting deleted. And uh, now is pretty much a time where you can do whatever you feel like you want to do in this house. And uh, before we uh, carry on, I do want to mention two more things. If you click and drag, this is another way to select multiple objects very quickly. And uh, <clears throat> on an object, such as this first aid kit, if uh, if we edit the base, if, if respawn is checked off, you cannot store objects in there because if you take your character and you put your things inside of this awesome box, when it comes time to respawn what is inside of it, everything that you put in there will be gone and it will be replaced by the things that respawn inside of it. This is why you cannot make a house out of a, a random dungeon because if a dungeon has something respawning inside of its containers, all of your stuff will be gone. So, with that said, we're going to continue uh, finishing this house, which can be your player's house, I mean, if that's what you want to do. This tutorial is uh, partly useful, I suppose, besides uh, just being an idea. You can literally make your character's house right now. Anyways, so you see these existing doors here. I, uh, I'm going to pull them off to the side just to have them and um, now I'm going to go uh, 
I'm gonna go to Good Springs, but um, actually, I'm gonna go right to uh, the house that we copied out of. We're gonna go. Um, see, this door is uh, it's linked. See this teleport check off. I'm going to view the door it's linked to, and this will take us outside into the wilderness. Now that we're outside, I no longer need this door, uh, it's reference sheet, and now I see the house. And the reason I did this is because I want to see the house. Uh, what is the house named? The house is named S-C-O-L-G-S House 06. Now that I know what it is, I no longer need to see it. I'm going to go over here a little bit and find a place where I can put a new house. And this looks like a good location, except uh, you may notice there's a, a lot of junk here. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to hit delete. Now that there is pretty much nothing in this lot right here, I'm going to find uh, find the house. Okay, since I was having trouble finding the house, I'm just going to take this house and duplicate it. And then uh, once the object is duplicated, I'm going to drag it over into my lot. I just found out the reason I did not um, I did not find the house was because it is a uh, static collection, and it's a static collection. You can kind of tell because of these fences, but uh, more importantly, you can tell by the icon down here. And I'm just going to flip this house around and. Uh, there we go. I just need to drag it forward a little bit. And now it pretty much looks like a normal house of Good Springs. It's nothing nothing really different. Nothing too out there. I'm just going to move this mailbox over a little bit. Now that the mailbox is down, you'll notice that there's, uh, first off, we want to make sure that the house is right. See how it's sitting above the ground? We want to sink it down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, put down some doors. Now, I'm not too familiar with what the name of the doors are, but I can look over here into the uh, reference window and get the base object of the doors we're trying to use, which is NV Good Springs Home. There we go. Door exterior. And here's the door. Notice that only one side of it is visible. Uh, a lot of objects are actually like that in the game, because really, it's only what you see that matters. There's no point in texturing an entire door if all you see is one side of it. And here, its reference window has popped up. And uh, I can hit the 3D data, and see how it's negative 180? We can just make it positive 180. And now the door is straight, and I just clicked away. You could just hit OK, but I clicked away and it fixed it. So I hit OK. Now I just push the door in a bit. Then again, technically the house isn't straight either. So uh, what I'm going to have to do is get the reference sheet again. Now that the reference sheet is up, I can click on 3D data 